I'm sitting inside our 1973 Mustang convertible and I'm preparing to start the engine. Technically cold, but it's not a cold day. It is middle of July, uh, August, almost. So summertime. And inside the air-conditioned garage, it might be about 73 degrees, so it's not cold like winter time. But it's cool enough to where I can show something of interest. I think it's of interest. First, my tachometer sitting just below zero RPM, which is fine. When I start this engine, the choke should be set enough for the high speed idle to have the cold idle engine RPM a little higher than 1000 RPM. But notice what happens. Now I am manually holding the throttle open about 1400, 1300 RPM. If I release my foot throttle, the RPM drops down to about 700. That tells me that the choke high speed can idle setting is set for the first of three cam settings. Like it did when I initially started it, I started to take my drop of gas. The engine in the cam isn't high enough to sustain that richness or that temperature of air fuel in it causing them to idle rough and or die. Now it's run long enough already to run in neutral or park at 730 RPM. If I put it in drive or reverse, it seems to still be okay. This is a carburetor spec sheet, 7 16th inch float, 1400 RPM for the fast idle setting. Now the high idle speed adjustment is a bit tricky. I am pretty sure I can use either a flat tip screwdriver, good luck, or a socket. I think the socket size is one quarter inch. I'm about to find out. Feel around for the head of the screw. I found it. Now, I have some diagrams in this video that show where the high idle speed screw is for the choke system. And we're supposed to put the high idle speed screw up against the choke high idle speed cam where there's a small marker, a V. This illustration shows four steps of the high-speed idle cam. I only saw three. So I picked the one in the middle, which is where that mark for V is located in this picture. Well, it's almost impossible to see it back behind here and the car where it's installed. But I know from observing when it was on the bench and from the diagrams, if I set the high idle speed screw up against the second step of the high speed idle cam, that's where it needs to be. There's three steps, low, intermediate, and high. This is a little different illustration showing the high speed idle cam and adjusting screw from a different perspective. I still picked the one in step two, the middle step, because I only saw three steps on the high-speed cam on my carburetor. Wherever the little V is located is the step you want to be on. Now, I have to set this manually by feel. 
What I do is I slightly open the throttle manually. I close the choke completely. When I release the throttle, and I mean just barely open and closing, if I try to move this nylon arm, I can't. It goes nowhere. So putting a little bit of pressure on that going forward, trying to open the choke, I slowly open the throttle until I feel I'm on cam position one. Then putting more pressure on it forward and opening it one slightly, I feel for it to go to cam position two. Just to reiterate, wherever the mark for that V is on your high-speed cam, that's where you want your screw to be. It's hard to see, which is why I had to go by feel, but I knew from before where my mark was. And then to make sure I'm on two, I go to three. So then I start over again, because now I know I found all the cam positions. One. Two. At this point, I'm ready to start the engine and adjust the high idle speed. Okay, I've got a seven millimeter socket on top of the adjusting screw for the fast idle speed adjustment. It's coming in at an unusual angle and I had to use a nut driver with a flexible shaft instead of a solid shaft like this. But it's on there. So what I'm gonna do next is without touching the throttle, attempt to crank the engine so it starts. On cam position two. I have a timing light over here, but not just any timing light. This timing light is also a tachometer. It'll show me how many RPM I'm running. So while the engine is warming up and running, I will use the fast idle speed adjusting screw to bring the RPM to about 13 to 1400 RPM, 1400 is spec. It's a little higher than I want. I might go as little as 1,200, but right now, I'll have Linda go ahead and start the engine. Well, then idle a moment, and then I'll have her pick it up, and I'll start to adjust the high idle speed. Okay. The engine is warming up. It's actually at almost 1,200 RPM, and it has been closer to 1,100. As it's warming up, it's getting faster. This might actually be set okay. I might just leave it setting alone where it is. No big deal. You know what? I'm gonna leave that. So let's go ahead and go to part two. Okay, the engine has warmed up enough to open the choke fully. And we're running at 1,320 RPM. That really is about what I want it to be, so I'm not going to adjust the high speed idle. Now what I'm going to do is open the throttle a little bit and let it come down to the throttle position solenoid pin. The high speed idle cam drops and the engine drops to 800 RPM. If I put the car in drive, It'd be about 650 RPM, 640, which is what I want it to be. But, when the engine is turned off, the solenoid pin drops, and the carburetor throttle closes a little bit more. I call it the throttle solenoid off position. It's also called curb idle or base idle. And we need to set that. This has been set, but I had someone ask me, can you show us how to set it? So here's, here's how I do it. First, when it's warmed up enough, 
Honey, I'm bored. I'm bored. That guy's going to be so annoying. But I am bored. It's the soldering pin collapses and the engine slows down. 439 RPM. 400 RPM to 420 tons what I normally like it, but this is fine. If I want to adjust it, on the other side of the carburetor, we have a screw. Okay, hold on. Okay, way back behind, in the back we have the curve auto screw, our base auto screw. If I turn that down, it slows the engine down. Turn that up. It speeds it up. Let me demonstrate that with the tachometer. Four hundred forty. There, I increased it thirty RPM. I'm gonna drop it back now. Four hundred. So that's how we set the curb base or solenoid weight off position. To test it, to make sure everything else is good. Okay, plug this. I, op I open the throttle. The solenoid pin takes a set. It's back up to 750, 760 RPM again. So it's set correctly. 